Hi everyone and welcome back to Purpose to Love. My name is Randy and today we're going to talk about part three of the boundary series and this will probably be the last part but um, today we're going to talk about age appropriateness and hopefully that makes sense in how it relates to boundaries after I finish going through a few of the things. Um, I won't keep you too long today but I do think it's important that as um, you know caregivers, teachers, related service providers, Wherever you find yourself working within this field of special needs, that we keep in mind the age of our individual or of our student, because I think it has a lot to do with the boundaries that we set. So let's just explore that and talk about a few different things. And again, if you have comments or thoughts or ideas, please leave a comment and I would love to hear from you. Let's get started. So the first point that I want to make um, in regards to age appropriateness is baby talk. That is one of um, the most frustrating things to me, especially when um, I hear people doing that with those who are older. Uh, it bothers me. But I want to backtrack a little bit and just kind of give a reminder that the individuals and the students that I'm really thinking about are those with intellectual and developmental delay, um, cognitive impairment, autism, Asperger's spectrum, moderate to severe. And I do think that all of us, um, you know, even those working within the field sometimes, especially if you're new to the field um, and those who are within the community, it's almost like sometimes we forget to uh, check ourselves when we are interacting with someone um, with disabilities. Uh, and we forget to acknowledge the fact that they are of a certain age. Um, so what I mean is for someone, you know, like some, one of the students I've had, you know, she was, I think, 17 or 18, but she, she herself talked like a child, but it was important for me to communicate with her still as though she was an 18 year old, not, um, you know, making my language complicated for her, but also not dumbing it down. Um, and also my tone. I wasn't like, oh, hey, how are you? You're so cute, you know? Even though she would talk like this and talk like a child sometimes, um, I would be like, oh, good morning, how are you? Like, I think it's important that we are just mindful of our tone. Um, I think that what that also does is it starts to put this expectation on the individual too, to know that, oh, they're not treating me like a child anymore because I'm not a child. So I think it internally kind of sets the tone for them to do and be more mature. Um, and it reminds you that they are more mature, um, even if their functional level doesn't always match up with their chronological age. So the second point that I want to discuss is physical boundaries. I think it's really important. Another thing to keep in mind when we are um, you know, discussing the age of the individual or the student, uh, because if they're not infants or toddlers or children, they probably should not be hanging out and sitting on your lap. Um, you know, if they're adults and if they're adults that can, you know, teenagers or adults who can, you know, sit in their own chair, you know, move on their own, you know, physically are more independent, they really shouldn't be all up under you or on you. Um, I think it's important not only for the individual to recognize, oh, I'm more mature now, I don't sit on just everyone's lap. I think it helps them to start to learn how to um, have uh, space and um, you know, really value their own personal space and, and value other people's personal space. So I think that's important. I also think it, as the uh, staff or the caregiver, it teaches or it um, helps us to model for everyone else how to interact with someone with these particular special needs. Um, I had a couple instances where I've had a few, um, you know, teenage or young adult or adult uh, in students or individuals I've worked with who always want to hug me and be around me and be on me. And I had to, I wouldn't forcefully be mean about it, but over time I had to gradually help them to see, okay, you know, I need personal space. You know, maybe you can ask me for a handshake or fist pump or high five, you know, or you can ask me for a hug. You know, I don't think there's anything wrong with giving hugs or being close, but you know, I do think they should learn how to um, ask to be in someone's personal space and someone should ask them. So I would model to them, you know, like one of my uh, individuals I worked with, she, the first day I met her, she just wanted to hug me. 
and she always wanted to be on me and that's how she was with everyone and I was like this isn't probably good I mean she is like vulnerable to be exposed or you know anything and I just don't want people to take advantage of her but she wasn't quite getting the whole boundaries thing so over time I she would try to come in for a hug and be like oh wait I don't think I really feel like a hug. Maybe you can ask me. And I would we'd go back and forth. And, you know, she would ask me. And I would say, yeah, you know, not today. You know, maybe we can do a fist pump today. And we would do that. And then, um, you know, sometimes, you know, she would give me a compliment. I would say, oh, thank you so much. Can I have a high five? You know, that was so sweet of you. Or sometimes I would ask her if she would want a hug. I wanted to teach her that she should ask me to get in my personal space. And I should ask her to be in her personal space. And um, not long, uh, maybe a few months or so, she started getting the hang of it and she would come up to me and like stop and then she's like, can I have a hug? And she would already be kind of like going for it, <laughs> but at least she was asking, so that was really good. Um, and she really started to develop an understanding of that. And I've had um, students and, and other individuals do the same and I just think it's really important that they learn their personal space value and to value that in other people. Um, so yeah personal space, uh, physical boundaries is really important. So the third and the final point that I want to discuss is um, entertainment. Entertainment regarding their age appropriateness and boundaries. And I think that's a, a difficult one for all of us sometimes to kind of find balance in. Because again, you're going to have an individual or a student with uh, who has a certain chronological age and it may not you know, match their functional age. So you could have a 45 year old who really loves watching Sesame Street or Barney, you know, and it's trying to find a good balance in that. Um, that's why as a teacher, when I was a teacher, because I worked as a teacher um, in the secondary programs so or high school and transition age students. And then I also worked uh, as a um, someone who managed a day adult day program facility for those with intellectual disabilities. And so I found that it was really important for me as a teacher to get them while they're young to enjoy different types of music and movies and um, entertainment that was a little bit more age appropriate so that, you know, when they were to transition into adult programming, that they weren't so stuck in such a childish uh, likes and, and um, holding on to just a few uh, preferences and likes. I think they can still like their Sesame Street and their Barney, but can we add to that? Can we expound on their, you know, likes and their dislikes a little bit more so that, you know, there's more opportunity for growth, you know? So what that looked like in, in my classroom was I tried to explain to the individual, explain to my staff and the family and the parent, like, hey, look, you know, they can like whatever they like at home and that's fine. But in the classroom, we're going to try really hard to get them to like new things, too, to enjoy other things as well. And if they didn't, then they didn't. But, you know, the goal was always to try, just try different music, try different things so that they could um, see if they would develop an interest in other things other than Barney and Sesame Street. Um, I did have one um, student and she was about 16 or 17. She really loved like the song, I'm a little teapot, I'm a little teapot, short and so like she really loved that and other little songs like that, younger songs like that. And, um, and you know, her mother did mention that she used that with her daughter, especially when she was having a hard time. This particular individual was self injurious. So she would hit herself, she would bleed, it would be a lot. And, and so she would really try to use that type of, you know, ch those children songs to soothe her. Um, and so, of course, like, I'm not going to, um, disregard that, but again, I want to find, like, what other things can we use to help her, um, to soothe and to enjoy, you know, because she also just liked childish type music just because she liked it. And so, you know, I, I would engage with my student at her level, where she was at, what she liked, and I would engage with her for a time, but then I would try to incorporate, you know, a new song here or a new this there, just so she could, you know, see that there are other things that she might like. And she, you know, came to really enjoy um, a lot of different kind of reggae music. She did listen to a lot of like uh, Mexican rock alternative music at home. And so, 
uh, you know, incorporating, uh, trying to incorporate that into the classroom as well. So she would, you know, know that we, we can listen to other things other than, you know, these kids songs, you know. Um, again, wasn't taking that away from her, but just wanting to add to uh, her list of likes, you know, uh, to bring a sense of maturity. And so, you know, we worked on that. And same thing, I would do the same, try to do the same thing within the day program that I was uh, managing. I really tried to emphasize to staff and to the individual, like, okay, this is not a daycare, you know, we can find more age appropriate toys or activities, games for you to engage with that are not like baby toys, you know, for toddlers and things like that. Um, I just think it's really important for the individual themselves to recognize that they are more mature and then for other people to recognize, especially people coming from, you know, maybe the outside, like other therapists or other parents coming in, you know, to see that, oh, you know, this is an adult, not a, not a baby, you know? So I think it's, it's really important how we help them project their image, um, the individual and the student, how we project their image to other people. So yeah, entertainment is a hard one. <laughs> so this is, this is the last thing I want to say. I know I said the last thing was the last thing, but this is the last thing. And um, what I want to say is really more encouragement. I just want to encourage parents and guardians to, you know, grow with your child um, as best you can. I understand that, you know, some of the disabilities embedded in them is a rigidity that the child has to kind of like work through or an OCD component. So I get that and that makes it hard for change and exposing them to new things. I get it. But if and when you can to expose them to new things, I think it's really helpful. Um, I'm sure you already know this, but just a reminder, I think it makes a big difference in terms of when they go into classroom, um, into the classroom or into school, and they're learning from the teacher, they're more able to receive from the teacher and, and do new things and learn new things. When they're in adult program services, I think it helps them to be more flexible in terms of being able to go and explore new places or try new jobs, you know, so, you know, as best as you can at home, you know, because our job is to do that, is to expose them to new things and to teach them new things and to build on their skills. So that is our job professional as professionals. But um, at home, I think it, it helps when it's happening at home as well, so that they can see that there is this connection, there's a balance that both home and, you know, school or day program is expecting them to try something new, to come up to a higher level. Um, so be encouraged. I know it's hard and it can be exhausting. And don't inundate yourself or them with having to change things all the time. Here and there, little bits here and there. You know, you never know what they might like and you can add it to their list. You know, the more they like, the better. So just want you guys to be encouraged. So that's all I have for today. Thank you so much again for watching um, my series on boundaries. And, um, you know, we discussed today about age appropriateness um, with students and individuals in regards to like how we talk to them, not having baby talk. And we talked about physical boundaries and, um, you know, we talked about entertainment in terms of age appropriateness. So thank you so much for uh, hearing me out. And again, if you have any comments or thoughts, leave a message below. And if you like this video, hit the thumbs up button. And if you haven't subscribed yet, please hit the subscribe button. I would really appreciate it. So again, thank you so much for your time and your listening ear. And I will talk to you soon. And remember, you are purpose to love. Take care. Bye.